Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Lady Survival here, and welcome to episode 5 of my World of Warcraft Beginner's Guide series. In our last episodes, we covered essential topics such as user interface, movement, quests, and we even explored the Night Elf starting zone and went to Exile's Reach. Today, we're diving deeper into what happens after you finish your starting zone and embark on your journey to the next town. Regardless of what race you've chosen, the transition from the starting zone to the next town is a significant milestone in your WoW adventure. So although we are questing on a night elf today, and we will of course be taking a look at the night elf town and continuing our adventure with WoW Noob, but I did want to take a moment to cover every single race's starting zone, the town that they progress to, and the zone that they come from. I think this is a really great way to get a sense of Azeroth and the world, where all of the races come from, and you can even make the decision of what zone you would like to quest in. For example, if we did want to bring our Night Elf, which is all the way in Teldrassil, in Kalimdor, if we wanted to, we could bring them all the way over to Eastern Kingdoms to quest in Elwyn Forest, which is the human starting zone. Or, for example, if you made a Horde character, say if you made a Blood Elf that was questing in Eversong Woods, if you wanted to, you could bring them to the Orc starting zone in Duratar. So, let's take a moment to go over where every race comes from, their starting zone, the town they transition to, and the zone that they come from, so that you know a little bit more and can make a better decision. Starting with the Alliance races, the humans start in Northshire Valley and their second town is Goldshire located in Elwyn Forest. The dwarves starting area is Coldridge Valley and their second town is Karanos located in Dun Moreau. The night elves starting area is Shadow Glen and their second town is Dolinar located in Teldrassil. The gnome starting area is Nomragon slash Chilbreeze Valley and their second town is Karanos located in Dun Moreau, similar to the dwarves. The Drenai starting area is the Amon Vale and their second town is Azure Watch located in Azure Mist Isle. The Worgen starting area is Gilneas City and their second town is Duskhaven located in Gilneas. And now moving on to the Horde races. The Orcs starting area is Valley of Trials, and their second town is Razor Hill, located in Duratar. The Undead starting area is Deathknell, and their second town is Brill, located in Tirisfall Glades. The Torrin starting area is Red Cloud Mesa, and their second town is Bloodhoof Village, located in Mulgor. The Trolls starting area is Echo Isles, and their second town is Senjin Village, located in Duratar, similar to the Orcs. The Blood Elf starting area is Sunstrider Isle, and their second town is Falconwing Square slash Fairbreeze Village, located in Eversong Woods. The Goblin starting area is Bilgewater Port, and their second town is Shipwreck Shore slash Town in a Box, located in Kazan slash The Lost Isles. So now that we've had a super quick recap of all the races and what their starting zone is and where their second town is, let's get back to playing on WoW Noob. So as I was mentioning, we finished up all of the quests in Shadow Glen, and naturally the last quest in every zone should kind of give you a quest that progresses you to the town naturally. Um, but also on our way out there is this NPC that has a quest for us to pick up and basically it's a quest to go and talk to the innkeeper in the next town and every starting zone should have this NPC so on your way out of any starting zone make sure that you grab this quest because you may as well. It's free experience and it's a great way to bring you straight to the innkeeper so that we can check out what an innkeeper is for too. So let's go ahead and accept this quest and now I'm going to be heading over to the next town so as you can see we have two quests to turn in so I'm just gonna run on over there and I will meet you there. Okay, so we are arriving in the town of Dolinar. It is so beautiful. I love so much about Teldrassil. And as you can see, there is quite a few things popping up on our mini map. There's a lot of quests to pick up, but we're going to head straight to these two turn ins that we have. And the first one we're going to be checking out is the Innkeeper, which is the quest that we picked up on our way out of Shadow Glen. Ah, yes, the delivery of herbs from Shadow Glen. It is a shame Porthanius could not bring it himself, for we have much to discuss discuss he and I, but I am glad to get the herbs nonetheless, and I am glad you came. While you are here, please rest yourself. Heroes must keep their strength and spirits high and must find rest and solace whenever they may, for to neglect one's peace of body and mind is a sure path to failure, so rest. 
Um, so as you can see, this quest is definitely encouraging you to use the innkeeper, which as a new player, this will be your first experience with an innkeeper and setting your hearthstone. So as you can see, when we mouse over the innkeeper, you can see this little hearthstone logo. And in your backpack too, you can see we have a hearthstone. So right now it is set to Shadow Glen. Any new character that you make, it will be set to your starting zone. Um, so right now, if I were to use my hearthstone, it would take us back to Shadow Glen. But what we want to do is talk to the innkeeper and we're going to say make this in your home and it'll ask us if we're sure we want to make Dolinar our new home and we're going to accept. We'll see a cute little animation go over us and now our hearthstone is set to Dolinar. So this is a super great way to get back. It's only a 30 minute cooldown so anytime if you're out adventuring and questing and you want to return to the town you can use that and also just for the fun of it let's run upstairs too just so I can show you guys that they do have some beds up here. Not that you can actually do anything with them but if you want you can type slash sleep and your character will lay down doesn't really do anything it's just cute <laughs> But on the topic of sleeping, not that sleeping in itself is what does this, but you might notice up here by my portrait, it shows that there are little Z's coming off of my character, and that is because we are in an inn. So let me show you when we run out of the inn. Let us make our way to outside of the building, and you will see that the Z's are going to go away once we're outside again. So what that means is that while you're in an inn or in a city or anywhere where you see those Z's that pop up, it means that you're gaining rested experience. So right now if you look at my experience bar you can see that it's in blue and there's this little tiny knob right here and that indicates that from this little point here all the way up to that bar, we are gaining 200% of normal experience. So basically you have rested experience. So if you log out in an inn or in a city before you return to your character, that little bar will go up. And then when you're questing and killing stuff and gaining experience, you'll be gaining more. And once we hit that spot there after we quest for a little while, it will turn back to purple and it'll go back to normal. So basically it's always good to log out in an inn or in a city so you can gain that rested experience so you can level up faster. So similar to our starting zone in Shadow Glen, and of course same for whatever race you made, there are going to be vendors where you can repair and sell and everything like that. So here we have a armorer and a shield crafter and she sells male gear, which as a hunter we can wear, but we cannot use the shield. So as you can see, they are red. We have a weaponsmith, they sell a variety of weapons. For the most part, I wouldn't really recommend ever wasting your money on buying vendor gear, but it's just kind of nice to know what is available. Uh, next to the weaponsmith, we have some leather armor. We're just running around and looking for more vendors. Over here, we have a cloth vendor. Seems to be all the vendors on that side, so let's run over here. I'm just kind of mousing over people trying to find where all the vendors are. Uh, over here, we have a bower. Some of these are actually pretty good. Again, I wouldn't really say that you have to buy it, but I'm just going to for fun because why not? I feel like a weapon is kind of nice to have because that's your actual damage. Now that we've explored the inn and all the vendors that are in there, let's go across to this building over here because there's going to be a few more vendors. And of course the layout will be slightly different for every town, but for the most part you should be able to find the same types of vendors. We have another food and drink vendor. It looks like she has some other stuff that the innkeeper didn't have. Next vendor that is upstairs in that room is a trade supplies vendor and he sells supplies for some of the professions that we're gonna be looking at. And next to the trade supplies vendor, we have a general supplies vendor. Um, she has some water, some food, and also some backpacks and even wrapping paper if you wanna wrap up a gift for someone. And that is pretty much all of the vendors that are around the town. So we went over ones where you can buy armor or weapons and you can repair and sell at. And then we also went over food and drink, general supplies and trade supplies. Okay, so the next thing I want to cover is professions and where the profession trainer is so you can learn to do that. So there's two different ways that you can find where the profession trainers are in a town. And the first one is by going to the tracking and checking off profession trainers. And you'll see a few things have popped up onto our mini map. We see that there's a bandage trainer, 
a profession trainer and another one is going to be way down over here that's a cooking trainer but they're just a little bit out of range or another thing that you can do is talk to one of the guards in this case as you can see a little kind of map pops up that means that they can kind of tell you around and where things are and you could click on profession trainer and she is going to mark over here there it put a little flag on our map essentially where the main profession trainer is so here is our profession trainer it's different in retail and classic in retail they've recently made it where you can just learn all of the professions from one NPC but back in the day there used to be different spots for all the different professions and you'd have to specifically seek out the mining trainer the skinning trainer but now it's a lot easier and you can learn everything from one person and the profession trainer that's here is the one that will teach you all of the main primary professions there is also secondary professions which we're going to be going over in a little bit too I can teach you the basics of any gathering or production profession, but that's all. To learn more than an apprentice's skills, you'll need to visit a specialist dedicated to only one profession. You can learn up to two professions, two gathering, two production, or one of each. Secondary skills like archaeology, cooking, and fishing doesn't count towards your two professions. You can learn as many of those as you like. So let's start with taking a look at gathering professions. Gathering professions allow you to acquire raw materials used by production professions, gathering herbs, mining ore, stone and jewels, or skinning beasts for their hides. You can either support a related production profession with gathering or simply sell the raw materials on the auction house. And then here you can see we can take a look at herbalism, mining, and skinning, which are all of the gathering professions. Herbalism allows you to locate and gather herbs from the wild. These can be sold at the auction house or used to support the alchemy or inscription professions. Skilled herbalists can also use their knowledge of the earth to heal themselves. And at this point, as you can see, if you are interested in learning herbalism, you would be able to click train me herbalism and you would be able to train that for 10 copper. But let's talk to him again and learn a little bit more about all of the others. Mining allows you to locate and mine ore, minerals, and stone from mining nodes in the wilderness and underground. These can be sold at the auction house or used to support the blacksmithing, engineering, or jewel crafting professions. Skilled miners also become tough and gain increased stamina. You'll need a mining pick in order to mine, and this can be purchased from trade or mining vendors. So that's where that trade vendor comes in that we looked at across the way. And then as you can see down below here, it shows the supporting professions that he mentioned up here in this first paragraph, if you'd like to train those to go along with mining. Skinning allows you to remove and prepare the hides from slain creatures. These can be sold at the auction house or used to support the leatherworking profession. Skilled skinners also become masters of anatomy, increasing their chances to critically hit a target. You'll need a skinning knife in order to skin creatures, and this can be purchased from the trade or leatherworking vendors. And now let's take a quick look at production professions. I'm not going to be going in depth to each one because there is definitely a lot here and I don't want to be here forever. Production professions allow you to turn raw materials into items that you can use on yourself, give to companions, or sell at an auction house. They're often paired with gathering professions so that you can gather your own raw materials, but it is possible to simply buy materials on the auction house. So feel free to look into these a little bit more if you would like. They're pretty easy in the beginning, pretty straightforward with the materials that you'll need, but they can get very, very advanced as you get deeper into them. So I would say as a beginner that gathering professions are the easiest way to go. It's a good way to make a lot of gold because you can sell your materials on the auction house and it's just super straightforward. You literally basically just go pick flowers and mine ores or skin animals and it's just super fun and easy. And while on the topic of professions, we can also open our our spell book and professions which you can open with P and this is where you'll find all of your information about what professions you have with these main primary professions you can only have two so as you can see there's a first profession and a second profession and you can't learn any more beyond two but you are able to unlearn one so that you can learn a new one so say for example if you picked up mining and blacksmithing and if later on down the road you say you know what blacksmithing isn't for me I want to get rid of it and get skinning instead you can totally do that and then underneath of these two primary profession slots there is also cooking fishing and archaeology which are secondary professions and you can learn all of them 
And there's also the bandage trainer, which used to be first aid, which was a secondary profession, but I guess that they changed that in retail and I kind of missed the memo. <laughs> so I know in this town there is a cooking trainer right over here and there's also usually a cooking quest over near the cooking trainer. Let's go ahead and learn cooking just for fun. Why not? Because it doesn't matter. You can have all of the secondary professions. We're going to go ahead and train that and then as you can see there's some different recipes that we'll be able to learn and you'll be able to cook yourself some food as long as you have the ingredients to do so. And just for fun we may as well pick up the cooking quest. I think back in Classic WoW it was to gather like eight crunchy spider legs to make some like spider leg stew but it looks like they've changed that as well and now it is to bring a Dolinar recipe book to someone in Dolinar. And while we're on our way over there I'm going to stop at the profession trainer oh again because I didn't even pick the professions that I would like to have. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to grab herbalism because I like picking flowers in the game. I feel like it's fun and then we are also going to grab I usually just like the gathering professions um, gathering I'm debating between mining or skinning let's do skinning because why not I usually do herbalism and mining but skinning sounds a little bit more fun right now okay there we go and then if we go into our spell book and professions you can now see that it shows that we have herbalism and skinning it also gave us some information about skinning and herbalism. Uh, this is just naturally, passively, when you go up to a flower on the ground, you'll just naturally do that. You don't have to actually put that on your action bar. And then it looks like we have access to some info about herbalism and same for skinning. And then it will show us our skill level um, as we skin stuff and herb stuff, it will go up. And if you would like to unlearn it, there's this little button here to unlearn. And then also for cooking that we picked up, there is a cooking fire, which I am actually going to move over to my action bar and this cooking thing too, because this is actually what we go into um, to craft stuff. So I might need that if I do want to make some food. Or of course, if you really wanted to, you could just open up this professions menu and just open it from there instead of actually having it on your bar. And here is an example of our cooking fire, which we will need to make a lot of stuff. So you can just set up a little cooking site and make some food. Anyways, now that we are done going over professions, um, we're working on this cooking quest, which actually leads me to the next part of the video, which is flight paths. So it's very typical in World of Warcraft that they will give you a quest to kind of force you to test out flying on a flight path, kind of similar to how you got that quest where you go and talk to the innkeeper, which kind of encourages you to set your hearthstone. This is kind of the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and accept the quest and we are able to, this is where we are located in Dolinar. Naturally, whatever starting zone you come from, in this case as a night elf, we already know the flight path to the city, which is Darnassus. And for this quest, that's exactly what they want us to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And as you see, we are going to get on a hippogriff. This is a hippogriff. It's really cute. And we're on our way to Darnassus. And welcome to Darnassus. We are flying in. We got a really nice view. It's a very elven city. Lots of trees, lots of vines. Let's zoom in and get a nice view. It is the most majestic, most beautiful city ever. It's amazing. And of course, the city is beautiful. I want to go explore it and show you guys, but I'm going to be saving that for another video, which I think is going to be my episode six that's coming up. And we're just going to go ahead and turn in this book. And as you can see, they want us to bring it to someone else. Back over to the Hippogriff. Typically with these quests, it's kind of like a back and forth thing where they're like, hey, go to the city and then come back to just give you a feel for how flight paths work, which is exactly what I'm covering right now. Are you ready to return to Dolinar? Yes, we are. Okay, so as you can see, we want to hire another hippogriff to take you back to Dolinar, and then we'll turn in that same note again. So it's kind of like a little, like, you're the messenger boy right now, and we're using it as a way to get used to using flight pass. So we're going to go back to Dolinar. Okay, so we have landed back in Dolinar. That was a fun little adventure. And we're going to go back over to near that cooking trainer to turn in our little quest adventure that we did. Sounds like she loved it. Thank you for bringing the book to Sister Aquini, wow noob. One of these days, I intend to take her up on her invitation to visit her in Darnassus. Farewell. 
Okay, boom, and we even leveled up from that and got a new ability. And that is pretty much everything that we wanted to explore in the town. We got to take a look at vendors, the innkeeper, uh, professions, and even learned a few professions, and we got to go on the flight path to Darnassus. I guess just a few other final things that I want to mention while we're in the town here. Uh, first of all, there is a oh, stable yeah. master here where you're able to heal all of your battle pets. World of Warcraft has battle pets, which is kind of like Pokemon duels battles in World of Warcraft. Um, um, so here you can come to heal your battle pets or you can also stable your pet here as a hunter um, you can have multiple pets that you're able to tame i actually haven't gone to tame a pet yet but i am able to i think it was at like level six that i gained the ability to go and tame a pet so I'm probably going to do that. Maybe I'll take you guys along for that adventure. But as a hunter, as you gather more pets, you can store them here so you can have a ton of them. And then the other thing that I want to mention is around the town, you'll see stuff like there's a hunter trainer. And I think over here there was a rogue trainer. And there's all of these class trainers in the town, but they don't actually do anything in retail. Back in Classic, you had to actually go and talk to your trainer to learn your new abilities. But in retail, you just get them. But if we were playing Classic right now, every two levels, um, you would have to go and train. So like level 2, level 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so forth. If you didn't come and talk to your trainer, you would not have your abilities. So that's why they're around. They're just kind of in the town to make it not look so empty, but they don't really do anything in retail. Aside from that, as I was saying, that's everything that I wanted to cover for exploring the town. And now we just basically want to go and do some quests. Um, because I already went over questing in my other episode and I don't want this one to be too long, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do some questing until I reach level 10 because that's the next thing I want to cover in this video, which at level 10 we're going to be unlocking specialization and talent points and even the dungeon finder. So I'm going to go off on my own, do some questing, hit level 10, and then after that I will come back and go over those last few things. Alright, so I have been questing around for a little while. I am currently level 9. And as you can see on my experience bar, I'm super close to leveling up, which means we're going to hit level 10 and a lot of stuff opens up at level 10 and I'm excited to go over all of it with you. I'm going to go ahead and turn in this quest. We're going to hit level 10. I'm going to head back to town and then we'll go over talents and specializations and all the stuff that opens up at level 10. All right, here we go. Level 10. How exciting. Little pop up level 10. View your combat specializations. Collections have opened up. As you can see, there's a lot of graphics showing us that we can do some stuff now. So this is really exciting. We'll also be able to learn to ride a mount. So basically there's a ton of stuff happening at level 10. I'm so excited. Welcome back to town and welcome to level 10. There's so much stuff to go over and we are going to start with specializations. So as you can see now, we are having our attention drawn to specs and talents, which we can open by clicking on or pressing N. We have the option to choose our specialization or spec more commonly referred to. As a hunter, we can be beast mastery, marksmanship, or survival. So as a hunter, you can only be damaged. So you can see right here, each spec is damage. But if you were playing another class, such as a paladin, they have an option to be a tank, a healer, or damage. So it would say, it would be like protection is one of the specs, and that would say tank, and then holy would say healer, and retribution would say damage. So whichever spec you pick is going to determine a lot about the types of abilities that you get. Um, Beast Mastery is going to have its own talents, such as kill command, which commands your pet to attack the target. You're not going to get that ability if you choose marksmanship or survival so it really will change your gameplay a good example that i like to use is mages because they have fire frost and arcane as a hunter it's kind of like well you're a hunter it's all gonna be you know like shooting arrows and stuff but if you think of it as a mage if you choose fire as your specialization well you're gonna have fire themed abilities if you choose frost they're gonna be ice frost themed abilities and then arcane it's gonna be all magical arcane purple stuff so that's a really good way to kind of see how your spec can really change the type of abilities that you're gonna have because those are totally fire frost and arcane are so different um, you're also welcome to change your spec at any time so 
for the fun of it, I think I might play survival. As you guys know, I am Lady Survival. I got my name because of being a survival hunter back in the day. They've really changed survival a lot. It's more of like a melee kind of class now. Um, so usually marksmanship is my favorite. My main character, uh, my main Sylvanas, who is a hunter, is marksmanship. I also like Beast Mastery quite a bit, but I've shied away from survival since they changed it, and I really want to try something new. So I'm going to be choosing survival. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it. As you can see, it says activating specialization. And at any point, once we've activated that, you can switch around as much as you like. So if I decide in a few levels, you know what, I'm not enjoying survival, I'm going to switch to marksmanship, you can just switch over, all of your abilities will change out. And you'll also have, um, over here is talents, and that will change as well, depending on what specialization you have. So talents is another thing that opens at level 10. They've recently changed this as well to this talent tree system. They used to have a talent tree, kind of like this in classic but more classic version um, before like a few months ago like last year in the recent years um, you would only get a talent point like every I don't know like 15 levels or something it was very very different I'll try to see if I can put a picture in of what it was over the recent years but they've gone back to a talent tree system which is really nice so as you can see we have our hunter talent tree this is all your main core hunter talents and then over here, there's survival points. So if we chose marksmanship, it would be marksmanship points and beast mastery, it would be beast mastery points. So this allows you to kind of build into your specialization, whereas over here is your main core spec. So same thing with whatever other class, if you were playing a mage, you would have your main core mage abilities and then whatever spec that you chose. So now that we've chosen our spec as our hunter, we can see that survival is active. I am going to go ahead and place my talent. As you can see, we have one talent point right now because we just hit level 10. You'll get a talent point every level. I'm not like an expert on this stuff. I don't know how often you get your survival, like your spec talent points. Maybe it's like every two levels or something. I'm not really sure. But basically, whenever you level, um, just go check out your talent tree. Make sure that you're placing your talent points. Um, I am going to take a look and see what we have. Let's get concussive shot. This is a slow and it's going to replace our wing clip ability. As you guys can see here, um, we have a wing clip, which is a melee attack, but instead for fun, I'm going to get concussive shot and I'm going to go ahead and press apply changes. We get a cool little graphic and then we can see that it switched out my wing clip for a concussive shot. So that's a little bit on specs and your talents. Uh, definitely feel free to just have fun, whatever play style you like. Again, like I was saying, super good way to think of it is with a mage. If you were playing a mage, try out fire, see how you like it, switch to frost, see if you like that better. Super fun to just switch around and see what you'd like. Okay, and then the next thing that I want to check out is the group finder has opened up at level 10 dungeons and even battlegrounds you are able to queue up for now so you're able to go into that with i or by clicking on group finder and here you can check off what role you're going to be as a hunter again we can only be damage but depending on what you are i wouldn't really recommend tanking or healing as a beginner so hopefully you're playing a damage class um, this spot over here indicates that you're an experienced player and you're comfortable kind of guiding the group um, so say if you're like comfortable with the roots of the dungeon, where to go, how the boss fights work, you would check that off. So don't check that off as a noob because you probably don't know what you're doing. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can queue up for a dungeon. Most people will do random dungeons. Um, you'll get like bonus rewards for doing that. And you would literally just select your role and find a group. And then it will put you in a queue that will usually last a few minutes, maybe like five or 10 minutes, depending on how active it is. And once it's ready, you can enter the dungeon. And if everyone accepts, you'll be teleported into the dungeon. And once you finish it, you'll return to where you were. Um, so you'll get a decent bit of experience experience for completing the dungeon as well as some gold rewards um, and then also you'll get experience while you're actually in the dungeon too so dungeons are really really fun they're a super super fast way to level up um, but you will level up kind of so fast that you'll out level the actual zones there's a lot of people who actually just level up with dungeons so I mean that is an option um, I'm gonna be making another video specifically going over dungeons um, I think in a few videos my next one isn't going to be but maybe by like 
my seventh or eighth uh, guide video, I'll be going over dungeons. The other thing that you can do is queue up for specific dungeons if there's like a specific one that you want to do. Um, right now we're set to battle for Azeroth only. Um, Chromie time isn't available for new players. I was kind of brushing up on Chromie time in my last video um, and kind of mentioning how you can pick like kind of what expansion you want to go to. For example, if you have access to Chromie time, if you picked the Wrath of the Lich King timeline, then you would have access to dungeons from the Wrath of the Lich King. But by default, it goes to Battle for Azeroth. So these are all Battle for Azeroth dungeons that we can queue up for. Whether you do specific or random, that's what it's going to be queuing you up for, Battle for Azeroth. The next one is Player vs. Player, which is Battlegrounds. Um, you can queue up for Bonus Battlegrounds, which is basically just random. It'll just do a random one, kind of like the random dungeons. And I think you get like extra rewards for doing that. I'm not a super big PvP person, but that is a thing. Or there's specific, and you can choose which one you want to do. I think you can queue up for a couple at a time, and then whatever one pops first you can go into and again I'm going to also be doing a video covering battlegrounds and going over um, kind of what they are as you can see as a quick breakdown Warsong Gulch is a kind of capture the flag sort of game uh, and then there's Arathi Basin which is capture and hold objective points so I'm going to be diving into battlegrounds in a future video after I cover dungeons in a future video but that is how you can queue up for some stuff if you want to try honestly it's worth a try, even if you're a total noob, and even if you suck, just go for it. Try out a dungeon, see how it goes, even if your team is like, dude, you suck. Um, it's whatever, it's just a game, so yeah. But I am excited to go over some dungeon etiquette and tips and how to do that and how they work in the future. And moving on, the next thing that opened up is the collections tab. So um, at level 10, you are able to ride a mount, but we have to go to the city to learn how to ride a mount and talk to a riding trainer. So I'm gonna actually be doing that as well and I will meet you guys over there and show you how that works. So while I was heading over to the flight path to go to the city, um, I had to reload my UI. There was like a weird bug that popped up and the quest to go to learn how to ride popped up. So it says, it's time for you to learn how to ride, seek out Jartsum at the Cenarian Enclave in Darnassus, and don't forget to buy your mount while you're there. I already have a mount because I've been playing, but as a new player, you will need to buy a mount. Um, so we're going to go ahead, accept the quest, and we're going to fly over to Darnassus, and I'll show you guys how to learn to ride a mount and how to mount a mount. Okay, so we are in Darnassus now, and we're going to learn how to ride. So the quest is, of course, marked on your map for the Night Elves that's in the Cenarian Enclave. And we're going to talk to the trainer. Uh, it says, don't forget to buy your mount while you are here. You can buy one from the Lanai right over here. Complete quest, and we're going to talk to the riding trainer. And we can see for 90 silver, we're able to learn to ride a mount. So we're going to go ahead and train. We got our little giddy up achievement and this is where you would talk to her to buy a mount but i of course already have them all but if you don't have a mount at all yet you can go ahead and buy one and of course it would be the same thing whatever race you made it will give you a quest to go and talk to the riding trainer and there will be someone to buy a mount at right beside them so we're going to go into our collections tab or shift p and i can now ride any of my mounts that i have but let me pick something cool. I don't even know what I want to ride. Ooh, let's go with that maybe. Or this one. That's a cool one. But I kind of like the Dragon Hawk. It's always such a hard choice. And you can ride as many mounts as you want. But I'm going to grab this. I just picked it up and I'm dragging it over. I have a spot over here that's key binded to V. So I can just easily press V. And I will get on my mount. And now we are on a mount. Um, this is technically a flying mount, but you can't fly yet at level 10. I forget when flying even opens up on retail, but you will get a quest when it's time. Uh, yeah, so now we have a mount, and you can see up here that it shows that we're on our mount, and it has a 60% move speed, so... Yeah, you can ride this anywhere outside. You can't ride it inside of buildings. Um, 
but this should make it a lot faster to travel around. And also though, one other thing, I thought it opened up at like level 11. I swear to God, I read that online, but there's also the adventure guide that opened up, which kind of goes along with doing dungeons. Um, so I just opened up the adventure guide. You can do that with shift J. Uh, so recently they've added the traveler's log, which is something where you can unlock stuff. It looks like there's a mount this month. It changes out every month. As you can see right now, it's June. Um, so if we fill up this bar, it looks like, if we get to a thousand points, there's a few different uh, things that you can do to get there. It's all kind of sorted by sort of like theme stuff. Um, as a noob, quests would probably be your main one that you would be working towards. Uh, to do that and then there's also the trading posts in the capital cities in Stormwind and Orgrimmar and there's like a vendor that you can use to buy stuff with these coins I forget what they're even called but uh, as you unlock your coins you will be able to spend them if you want and then there is some suggested content this is just kind of like your main place to go to find stuff to do um, it kind of like prompts you to be like hey like check this out join this um, and then there's the dungeons tab which is where you can go to um, kind of read about dungeons say um, if you queued up for a battle for Azeroth dungeon um, you can always check these out whenever but while you're in the dungeon if you go to the adventure guide it will automatically open up whichever dungeon that you're in so say for example if you were in a Tal Dazar um, when you open your adventure guide it will go right to this and you're able to kind of see all of the different bosses and you can find out kind of what they do, what their abilities are, what to kind of look out for. You can see what loot they drop, the abilities that they have, and even the model. So basically the adventure guide is your friend. It's super noob friendly. If you don't know anything about a dungeon and you're worried about messing up, just take a look at the uh, adventure guide. And then it has the same for raids. You can look through all of them and see uh, the bosses, what they do, what to look out for. So basically just a handy little adventure guide. So anyways, I think that that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. I hope that you guys found it helpful and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one where we're going to be taking a look at cities. I'm going to be going over every single city in the game for each race to kind of let you guys know what each race's capital city is and how to explore cities and even going over travel such as using portals and boats and zeppelins and everything. So I'm really excited for that one and I will see you guys then. Bye!